The Reading Blue Mountain and Northern Railroad, with its corporate headquarters in Port Clinton, is a privately held railroad company serving businesses in nine eastern Pennsylvania counties. The railroad runs about 400 miles from Reading, Pennsylvania to Mahoopany, Pennsylvania, and it operates the seven-mile rail line from Tawanda to Monroton in Bradford County. They offer freight services and passenger excursion operations and employ hundreds of employees. The company began operations in September of 1983 as a 13-mile short line operating a state-owned branch line between Hamburg and Temple, Pennsylvania. Named the Blue Mountain and Reading, they rehabbed the line and provided service to freight customers and a passenger excursion business was also developed. Within a few years, the Blue Mountain and Reading took on the operations of three more state-owned branch lines to provide freight service to eastern Pennsylvania industries. In December 1990, Conrail was looking to sell off over 150 miles of branch lines in the anthracite coal regions. The BMNR took on this challenge and expanded the company, changing the name to the Reading, Blue Mountain and Northern. Operations began on December 15, 1990. The first few years saw work to repair the badly neglected trackage and to develop a steady pattern of service for the many industries that relied on rail service. In July of 1992, Conrail sold some additional track near Hazleton to serve the Jetto Coal Company. This would allow the bulk of all remaining rail shipments of anthracite coal to be funneled through Reading. At the same time, the RNN also acquired the connection from East Mahanoy Junction to Oneida and the line to Delano from Schuylkill County. In order to have better control over the supply of empty hopper cars for coal shipments, the RNM began to buy cars in 1995, starting with 265 cars dedicated to Quebec iron and titanium service. By the end of 2013, RNN had purchased over 1,000 freight cars. The RNN had been operating from several former Conrail offices around the system. In late 1995, these offices were combined into a new corporate headquarters at Port Clinton.
As Conrail continued their program of spinning off rail lines that did not fit into its Big X plan, the Reading, Blue Mountain, and Northern expanded again. In August of 1996, they acquired a portion of Conrail's Lehigh Division. Comprised of over 100 miles of mostly ex-Lehigh Valley Railroad trackage, the Lehigh Line stretches from the southern foot of the Pocono Mountains at Lehighton through Wilkesbury and Scranton and onward to Wyoming County. To connect the two divisions, the RNA negotiated trackage rights over the Carbon County owned 18 mile railroad between Hometown and Jim Thorpe. In the fall of 1996, Conrail announced its intention to merge with CSXT, and after a fierce fight over the future of Conrail, CSX and Norfolk Southern ultimately agreed to split Conrail, and on June 1st, 1999, NS took over all the portions of Conrail that connected with the RNN. To meet the demands of this expanded traffic base, in 2001, RNN purchased a fleet of higher horsepower six-axle locomotives and retired some of the older units that had begun to wear out. With this move, the RNN became an entirely EMD-powered railroad.
In August of 2001, the RNN completed negotiations with Norfolk Southern and Procter & Gamble to take over exclusive service to P&G's largest manufacturing facility at Mahoopany, Pennsylvania. Working with NS, they were able to provide P&G with a service and rate package which ensured that inbound raw material continued to move by rail. In November of 2001, the RNN reached an agreement to take over the ownership of the track within the Crestwood Industrial Park. With that agreement in place, they were able to guarantee long-term rail service to the many customers located there. Having worked to ensure a steady stream of customer businesses along the Lehigh Division, they turned their attention to reaching agreements for the use of the line as a key transportation corridor. Both Norfolk Southern and Canadian Pacific were interested in using the Lehigh Line as a north-south corridor for goods moving from the Northeast and Canada to the New York City market via Allentown, as well as points south and east of Reading. In June of 2002, they entered into a trackage rights agreement with Norfolk Southern, and in August of 2002, they renewed a prior agreement with the Canadian Pacific. Combined, these two carriers utilized the Lehigh Line to move over 80,000 carloads a year. In the summer of 2002, the RNN began a critical step to enable the direct physical connection of their two divisions without the need to run over any foreign track. And in July, they entered into a long-term lease of two abandoned railroad bridges over the Lehigh River from the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. With that agreement in place, they were able to turn their attention to the restoration of the bridges and rail infrastructure and the necessary work along the Lehigh River to connect the railroads. The project would culminate in the opening of the bridge in November of 2003.
The two divisions were now connected and the Lehigh line had a solid business base from both online customers and overhead trackage rates revenues. The RNN had begun restoring the yard at Penobscot in 2000, which resulted in an agreement made in May of 2003 to have Norfolk Southern deliver inbound interchange cars there, allowing a greatly improved car cycle time. That arrangement lasted until 2020 when NS resigned operations over the RNN Lehigh line. By the time the RNN celebrated its 20th anniversary in the fall of 2003, they had become a very successful short line. They built solid traffic bases on both the Lehigh and Reading divisions and had put in place an operation with upgraded track, locomotives, and freight cars. They were gaining a reputation for customer service and attention to detail. Evidence of their customer focus became clear to all when in 2002, the rail industry publication Railway Age chose the Reading, Blue Mountain, and Northern Railroad as Regional Railroad of the Year. They followed that up in 2004 when they were awarded a marketing award from Norfolk Southern Agricultural Products Group for Business Development. MD's SD38 made a name for itself in heavy drag freights and busy hump yards from the hills of Minnesota to the sprawling yards of the Northeast. And though production numbers were small compared to that of the similar SD40, many of these locomotives would change hands several times over their long careers, some of which continue to this day. Reading and Northern number 2003 is a non-dynamic brake equipped SD38 that was built in July of 1971 as the Detroit, Toledo and Ironton number 253 which later became the Grand Trunk Western number 6253. Today it looks like just another green RNN workaday diesel but in 2003 it was the classiest locomotive in coal country. We caught up with the 2003 at the grade crossing of Ferndale Road at the Elliott Street intersection in New Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ferndale Road is one of the main roads into town while Elliott Street is a short, dead-ended residential drive. The 2003's status as a celebrity locomotive came in 2003 with the 20th anniversary of Reading and Northern as a railroad. To commemorate the occasion, the 2003 was painted in a special, one-of-a-kind tribute scheme depicting the road's 20-year history on the sides of the long hood, the cab, and with special silver-painted trucks. 
The loco was a regular visitor to the area and spent much of its time in and around the Penobscot Yard, which is where we caught it numerous times over the course of 2004. And whether it was earning revenue for the railroad or just resting between runs, it's a small but relevant slice of local railroad history. So by now, you've probably noticed the yellow engine behind the 2003. And if you look closely on the nose, you can see where there used to be a shield. So given the color and the shield, it's pretty obvious as to the heritage of this engine. Without keeping you in suspense too long, you get to see the Reading and Northern 3055 and what it looked like in 2004 when we caught it here on Penobscot with the 2003. And this is what she looks like today. Back to the future, the 2003 is just another workaday locomotive for the railroad on just another workday on the railroad. In 2005, the RNN took a big step forward to expand its passenger excursion business with the acquisition of the Lehigh Line and the new connection between Jim Thorpe and the Lehigh River Gorge, the RNN was now positioned to offer the region a tourist attraction. In May of 2005, the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway was born, and every weekend and holiday from May to Christmas, hundreds of visitors to Jim Thorpe board their passenger coaches for a ride into the gorge. As their operation and business expanded, the need to upgrade facilities grew as well. And in the spring of 2006, they opened their brand new Penobscot Yard Office building. With a solid freight business in hand and a growing passenger operation underway, Andy Muller decided to begin the renovation of his steam engines. At the end of 2007, number 425 was back in service, pulling passenger trains and occasionally the company office car specials to take thousands of guests on steam excursion trips throughout the operating territory. The RNN system expanded again in 2009 with the addition of the 7 Mile Tawanda Line near the New York State border. This line is located in the heart of the Marcellus Shale region. In 2011, RNN again was recognized by Railway Age as Regional Railroad of the Year for the development of port operations for the export of anthracite coal. In 2012, the Reading and Northern entered into an agreement with Can Do to purchase the rail assets of the Humboldt Industrial Park in Hazleton, the region's largest rail served industrial park. The Reading and Northern ultimately took over service to the park and its 11 new customers on January 1, 2016. The Reading and Northern was recognized in 2015 again when they were named the Regional Railroad of the Year by Railway Age magazine making it the third time and them the only railroad to ever achieve that recognition three times. In 2016, they were the winner of the American Short Line and Regional Railroad Association's Marketing Award, making it the third time they won the award, which recognized their establishment of a railroad-operated transload and storage warehouse in Old Forge, Pennsylvania. The evolution of the Blue Mountain and Redding to the Redding, Blue Mountain and Northern to what I simply call the Reading and Northern has been an interesting ride, and one can only wonder where the railroad will be on its 50th anniversary.